Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Earshot Jazz Prime Time, 7.30 Friday night, live at the Royal Room, and delighted to be here tonight with Benjamin Hunter and some uh, good down-home acoustic blues and uh, roots music. The same mother as jazz, and we're celebrating it deep tonight. Earshot Jazz live at the Royal Room here, thanks to uh, Brad Ruda, Mean Motor Scooter, and uh, thanks as always to Halen Blanchard, our excellent production manager, for taking care of business like no one else. And thanks to you all for being out there watching. Really grateful to be here. I'm John Gilbreth, director of Earshot Jazz. We're on Friday nights. Next week, Xavier Le Couturier with his quartet. LaVon Hardison will be in the following week, Duende Libre, and we've got a very special event for April 30th, which is uh, International Jazz Day. Uh, Aha Mefule, J.O. Luo, will do a live set with his quartet, and then we will rebroadcast his uh, Golden Ear Award-winning Concert of the Year music from Susan after that. So that's a double header for that April 30th night. As always, in the, the spirit that we acknowledge that we are here on unceded land of the Coast Salish people, the Duwamish tribe, we also acknowledge that we are dealing with and celebrating uh, jazz music as a cultural treasure of black America. And as I say, we're going deep into that treasure uh, tonight with Benjamin Hunter. Um, it is an absolute honor to have him with us. You'll hear some stories, a lot of music, and um, warm up that uh, hand clapping emoji on your computer. Kick back and have a great time. Please welcome Benjamin Hunter. Must I holler? Must I holler? Please, said I believe. Said I believe. I, I shake them on down. is deep and the river is wide best believe you gonna see me on the other side must I holler must I holler say must I holler B 
Viva, 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 shake them all down. Ain't she a woman? And ain't I a man? That's the truth, so you best understand. Must I holler? I said, must I holler? I said, must I holler? Leave out, leave out, leave out, shake them on down. Folks, um, that was my my uh, my little uh, lyric version of a of a of a uh, uh, of a version <laughs> of "Shake 'Em On Down" done by uh, Rainy Barrett Burnett out of the Hill Country, Mississippi. Um, "Shake 'Em On Down" is a, a song that's been done by you know Lightning Hopkins and uh, uh, the great Fred McDowell, um, and uh, you know take it how you want to take it. You saw how my version went. Um, this next song we're gonna do uh, is gonna get into um, it's gonna get into the early days of the blues. Uh, this song was first recorded by the great Ma Rainey back in 1924, and uh, you know the record industry before, leading up to this point um, didn't really know uh, what they were dealing with, right? And so you know uh, just before this. Um, they uh, rec recorded the first blues with Mammy Smith, um, Crazy Blues, and uh, and they didn't they didn't expect it to be the hit that it was, right? And um, you, you know you got to understand that when we think about blues, folks, I think a lot of this country thinks of uh, you know the 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 bluesman, the, the the singular solo fella sitting on a porch with holding a guitar playing this music. Um, but really, that that narrative—I mean, that—that's th true. But that's not—that's not—that's that's not including all the different parts that make up this this uh, this music that has um, that has spread across the entire world and influenced a whole you know multiple generations of music ever since. Um, it was women that carried the torch for this music. You know, it was it was uh, Mammy Smith, it was Ma Rainey, it was Bessie Smith. It was these women that. Uh, that had just such triumphant voices, um, and could and could uh, could give you all ranges of emotion, just based off of their experience. You could hear it. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't training. It was it was a different type. It wasn't the, it wasn't the Western canon of musical training, right? It was it was from a it was from a a, a place altogether different and um, and unexperienced, especially by a lot of white all, all white audiences, really. Um, and so this music became uh, super popular through through the efforts of these women, that uh, that gave it its gave it its uh, its strength in at least in the recording industry. So this is a song, uh, you know, Lead Belly did. Everybody did this song. Lead Belly, you know, Big Bill Brunzi. Everybody did it. it was C C Rider. <laughs> She played this with her Georgia Jazz Band. Capital, her Georgia Jazz Band. That's dope.
C.C. Ryder. As you can gauge from the song, it's a uh, C.C. Ryder maybe described, uh, you know, somebody that wasn't too faithful. Um, but it was a very popular song. I don't know if everybody was just unfaithful then or people are just generally unfaithful, period. Uh, it was a smaller population, so who knows how, how that affected their community. We're still trying to figure out <laughs> how that works. Uh, who knows what's going to happen after this pandemic? Maybe, maybe it'll be uh, it'll be like that that show Hair. You know, everybody will just start loving each other. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? In that in the cameras there, you you saw you saw that Hair, right? You know, let the sun shine. I might do that later. No, I'm not going to do that later. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is just a yeah. It would require me to undress and be completely naked on stage. And I don't know if we have the. 
I don't know if we have the right lenses for that. There's about 60 people that'd be into that. This next song, um, this next song I, I learned um, from a, a friend of mine and a wonderful musician um, down in, uh, in Louisiana, although I think he actually, I think he actually lives in Texas. I'll have to check on that. Uh, Cedric Watson, great oh, yeah. fiddle player, violin player. Say what? Louisiana. Yeah, it, I mean, he grew up in Texas, East Texas, and, and you know, the, but he, I, he, prob yeah, he probably lives in Louisiana. He's got a whip business now. He's making whips. It's crazy. He's, he shoots these crazy videos on Instagram where he slows them down and he'll do this whip thing and he'll like whip a little Lego off of a thing. <laughs> it's dope. So you should buy his whips. Um, everybody's looking to get into a new hobby. That's one of them. Uh, this, is a, this is a song he taught. It, he didn't teach me, but he, he played it and I was like, I need to learn it. So I learned it. Um, it's called Pas Janvier and uh, translated it's like you know Father Winter or, um, or Father January and you know back when this the this, this song is a tragic s story about a a, a, a a young man that's pleading to Father Winter to um, send him back his, his baby his beloved she died because of the cold, cold winters. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there even today, but certainly back in, you know, when around this song would have been written and played and, and remembered or, or, or told as a story, especially about people living out in the country and don't have the resources to warm their, themselves and so, you know, fall to death's hands through just lack of heat, um, which uh, was fairly common so this song is a is a is a young man's pleading with with uh, father january to bring her back it's a really powerful song um but this would have been played by like you know dennis mcgee in fact I, in fact i think dennis mcgee the famous cajun fiddler talked about how he he learned this from some traveling creole musicians that were coming through town and um and that's where he got this song and you know there's a relation there's there's there is a, there is a relationship between Creole and Cajun. There's two different identities, right? Black and white folks, um, but a, a, a community that has a has a history, um, and and music has been one of those ways, you know, like so many places in the rest of the world where there was a bridge, um, and so much of those traditions are shared. So here's Pas Janvier. <laughs>
pas janvier, tout me fait trop du mal. Quand tout me refuse, tout me refuse, mais pour les bon, pas janvier, tout me crée le coup. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye pour toujours. Pas Janvier, nice little Creole tune. Um, now I'm going to switch tracks completely, and I'm going to play you kind of a rag, um, well, yeah, it's not a kind of, it is, it's a ragtime tune. But, um, you know, when we think about jazz, um, we have to think about, we, we, don't just, we don't just think about blues as the contributor to jazz music. There's so many other facets that added and had to meet and congeal and bounce off and ricochet and do all the things that one needs to do to, to make something new. You know, jazz, is, we didn't just appear, right? Um, and, and blues is certainly a significant part of it. But in the late 1800s, um, uh, in uh, Reconstruction America, um, there was a lot of different bubbling of things happening. Um, we had, uh, in the 40s, we had um, the nasty, but, um, well, I don't want to say, I don't want to say necessary, but I guess hindsight means you can't not change that, of minstrelsy in the 1840s. A lot of fiddle banjo kind of stuff, um, but other, also other instrumentation and rhythms. Um, obviously, obviously black music being uh, being um, characterized by um, at the time many of the early minstrel folks were Irish. Uh, but then coming through past the Civil War, you also had um, marching band music. You had um, like European art music. Um, some of the salon style music, operatic stuff for, you know, whether it's vocal or, or instrumental. Um, and then you also had a, a, a big um, piano thing happening that was happening very specifically, um, you know, especially in like New Orleans or in St. Louis in a bunch of brothels. And this music was like, and a lot of the music that was played in there was, was this like ragtime, this stride kind of ragtime piano. It was very... It was very thumpy, and it was very swervy, and uh, it was all the necessary tempos and cadences that one probably would want if they were hanging out in a brothel. And, uh, and so you have like ragtime and marching band and European art music and fiddle banjo minstrel stuff that was kind of turning itself into um, early vaudeville, and then you have vaudeville, then you have string band, and then you have all this other stuff, and now all of that stuff kind of culminates to create what we know of as jazz. You know, it borrows from all of those different traditions. Um, that's a long-winded story to play you, a uh, firmly white-authored ragtime tune <laughs> by, uh, by the great Arthur Smith. It's called Peacock Rag. <laughs>
Peacock Red. Yeah. So, uh, this year has been quite the year for everybody. More so for a lot of people than others, obviously. But it's given me a lot of time to play guitar. Before this, I was uh, touring a lot and playing a lot like so many other musicians and man, I had so many things lined up for 2021. It was supposed to be a really big year. Um, I, I, I uh, play a lot with, um, I played a lot for many years with a, a gentleman named Joe Siemens in a duo that we creatively um, called Ben Hunter and Joe Siemens. And uh, we uh, played a lot of a lot of similar stuff, a lot of old blues and rag tunes and folk tunes and stuff. And usually I played the mandolin and the fiddle, and there were a couple songs where I played the guitar, and Joe usually played the guitar and the banjo and sometimes harmonica, and we'd sing and do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and it had always, you know, I've, I've been working on it for the past three or four years playing this old box, and now I had this time to play. So, you know, <laughs> it's almost a, it's almost a, another gift because it's really hard to do a whole set with just violin and mandolin. It's just not, it's just not a, it's not a timbre that I think lends itself to a 60 to 75 minute set. So um, I've been playing a lot of these old blues numbers um, and it's been a lot of fun. So I'm gonna play you, uh, earlier I mentioned the great Fred MacDowell came out of the hill, hill country of uh, Mississippi. Um, you know, just a, just a force, you know, one of the kindest, sweetest gentlemen, um, you know, very giving and very honest and very true, you know, just a very true person, you know, and, um, and he, uh, he made some really great music, and, um, and this is one of his songs uh, called me, Write Me a Few of Your Lines. Just make sure I'm in the right... Make sure I'm in the right key, which I'm not. So I haven't mastered quite the uh, tune and talk. You can find my suitcase Let me stand on your shelf You can find my suitcase Made me stain on your shell. When you mistreat me, mama, better find somebody else. When you get home, mama, baby, write me your few of your lines.
When you get home, baby, please write me a few of your lines. Lend me some consolation, baby, for my worried mind. Lord, I left my baby standing in the back door crying. Yes, I left my baby standing in the back door crying. I never felt so sorry till she said goodbye. I'm gonna see it down on the ground Yes, I'm going down to the river I'm gonna see it down on the ground I'm gonna let the waves of water wash my trouble down. Fred McDowell for you. Um, in that same vein of Fred McDowell, well, certainly in the same region, this guy by the name of R.L. Burnside. And uh, many years ago, Joe and I decided to go down to um, Como, Mississippi. And, uh, you know, Como, Mississippi sits in the, in the kind of the middle top part of the hill country. It's kind of the main town uh, in, in, that, in that northern part of the, of, the, of the state where all these folks came from, you know. You got all these blues markers going up and down the freeways of uh, Arl Burnside and Fred McDowell and, um, you know, all kinds of cats. And uh, you really do get a feel for what this music comes from. You know, this beautiful countryside, these rolling hills, and these like, they're not forests, but what, what, forests of like the softest looking leaves. Like, you, we talk about running naked, we're talking about being naked, but if, if I was to run naked through some bushes, <laughs> this is just where my mind goes while I'm driving through. Mississippi, it would be it would be through those it would be through those those forests because the leaves just look so great. Now there's probably all sorts of poisonous <laughs> leaves that uh, that are not 
that I don't know about. But it's just it's just a very it's just a very beautiful, um, airy space, you know. So when I listen to like a lot of these tunes that are just you know like the one we just listened to um, and the one we're about to listen to, Poor Black Maddie, it's just it's just this driving repetition, you know, just th this constancy. Um, you know, that th there's no need for any f fancy chord changes or like, f you know, ornamentation. It's, it's just, it's about like, it's about letting loose and having some sort of r music that is heavy in rhythm um, play so that you can just release. And I just, I love that about uh, the hill country music and and um, and the traditions that come out of that fife and drum and all of these old relics, you know that um, that we don't, you know, we we have to have so many things happening. For I, I was watching this master, I was well, I didn't pay for the master class, but you know, Facebook gives you all these things and you start, you know, what are you gonna do? What what are you doing? So you look at the thing and this guy, four time Grammy winning thing, and he's like. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta add something every thirty seconds in a song to keep people interested. And I'm thinking to myself, what? That's that seems like a lot of stuff to just be adding constantly to a song. Can't you just make a good song and just like a good groove? Isn't the groove what it's about? But this guy's like, no, you know, I just try and make every 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 thirty seconds. I try and add something new, some other layer. And this is just this is the complete opposite of that. It's just. It's just consistent, the rhythm. <laughs> Black man ain't changing a cone. Girl got drunk, closed the door. Poor black man ain't got change of cone. By my bed, woman I got, she cherry red. Need no heater, fine plane by my bed. Woman I got, keeps me cherry red.
let's start the show. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> Remember the Dave Chappelle show? The fellows in the beginning of the show, they'd, they'd get to some place, they'd play something, and then they'd get to the... Let's start the show. Anyways, that's, that's for me, I guess. <laughs> uh, anywho. So, you know, we started off on this, uh, on this road, and we, we started off um, kind of with these early blues. And uh, when I was talking about the formation of jazz, I, uh, I'm, I forget if I mentioned jug band music. And uh, jug band music is, uh, is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a mind worth exploring if you have the opportunity to. Um, there are three probably dominant jug bands. Um, the um, Memphis Jug Band, uh, the um, Mississippi Sheiks, um, and the Memphis Jug Band would have, would have included like Cannon, Gus Cannon, and his and his Jug Stompers. Um, but also, if you go, so you, so you had Mississippi, then you had Memphis, and then if you go up the river a little bit further, you get to Louisville, and uh, in Louisville, um, uh, you got uh, um, Clifford Hayes. And as a violinist, um, Clifford Hayes is is just one of those inspirations. Um, oddly enough, he was raised in the country. I believe in I believe in Alabama. I, I need to check my sources on that. Um, and you know, was raised playing this kind of like you know country uh, like fiddle fiddle country you know rural rural style music. But when you listen to his playing, it's uh, it's it's all jazz all day. I mean, this is like the precursor uh, or the co-cursor <laughs> or, you know, of, of jazz violin. And interestingly enough, you know, we all think of um, trumpets and, and clarinets. You know, we think of like, you know, uh, Louis Armstrong or Sidney Bechet, you know, in terms of how, how they were the front for, for jazz bands, you know. And so you kind of think that, okay, the, the, the loud trumpet or the loud clarinet or, or, or something like that saxophone is going to be leading these jazz bands but in the early days of, of blues or the early days of jazz it was violins that were leading the jazz bands um pops foster reminisces in his book in his autobiography i guess it's a semi-autobiography it's kind of an odd, anyways read it pop foster's autobiography he talks about how back in the early day and this guy remembered everything this was like a, a bass player who played with everybody ne never not never not 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 yet never not had a job uh playing bass, played with everybody, and, and, and remembers everything. You read his book and you're like, what the heck? How do you remember the date? How do you remember the, how do you remember the type of meat that was on your sandwich at lunch in 1934 with whoever, you know, but he did. And he talks about how the dance, the, 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 the band was quiet. Everything was so quiet back in those days that the band got their rhythm from the people dancing in, on the dance floor. So the shuffling of the feet dictated the pace that the band played um, you know and that was back when the fiddle was the when the violin was leading those jazz bands but I, I, I went off into a, a road um, Clifford Hayes um, uh, was just a, a phenomenal uh, vi violinist and, and jazz uh, and uh, player for, for his for his uh, jug band up in up in Louisville but the Mississippi Sheiks um, were led by uh, the Chapman family. So um, uh, Sam Chapman, um, Bo, uh, Bo, um, Bo Carter, Bo Carter um, led this band, and uh, and they, you know, they they were they were around for like five years, maybe thirty to thirty-five, I think, is when they were in their heyday. Um, recorded over seventy sides, and uh, made a lot of music, a lot of stuff that kind of sounds the same. But um, like like this song that I'm about to sing, if you were to listen to the whole collection of Mississippi Sheik tunes, you will have heard the guitar part multiple times from various songs. But these people played for horse races, and um, you know, there's a song by the Memphis uh, Jug Band called uh, "Mr. Crump Don't Like It," and uh, it's funny because it's Mr. Crump, and he was a super uh, tyrannical. Um, uh, uh, just horrible mayor of Memphis for uh, one term 
um, but ended up running the town for years afterward because he was he was in you know he everybody he had he was in everybody's pockets you know and and controlled everything but so they wrote a song for him called Mr. Crump don't like it if Mr. Crump don't like it he can go have it here and uh, you know they play for political parties and all these all these folks and and uh, just a great a great um, addition to the canon of of American music, the songbook of American music, especially during this early time, the 20s, 30s, and 40s, when the music industry is still trying to figure out how to, how, how to sell this music. And they don't, they don't figure it out early on because they create two different records, the race records and the hillbilly records. And the race records were for black people and the hillbilly records were for white people. But, and, and so like the hillbilly records are like fiddle banjo, like country like you know th those kind of tunes and the industry thought well that's what white folks want to listen to and and the race records were comprised of like gospel jazz blues because that's what they thought black folks wanted to listen to but the fact is is that black folks were playing all sorts of stuff and it's an, it's a shame because we missed out on an opportunity to capture a lot of violin playing from a lot of black folks that were playing this music because of this assumption that black people didn't play fiddle. I could talk about all this day to day, but this is not what you're here for. You're here for me to play some music. So that's, that's my story about the Mississippi Sheiks et al. It's the other thing. It's called Driving That Thing. This is a little bit sexual. <laughs> but, but it's Friday. Old Uncle Bill, he was a working man Laid down and died with his hammer in his hand From driving that thing mm, From driving that thing mm. All the lawyers in town Talking about him driving that thing Said old Uncle Bill, he lived uptown Driving that thing has done carried him down. Oh, from driving that thing. Yeah, from driving that thing. Even down to the judge is talking about him driving that thing. Yes, Uncle Bill called the doctor. Come here quick. I done got my hammer out of fix. Mm, from driving that thing. Yes, from driving that thing All the lawyers in town Talking about him driving that thing Now watch out now, here we go Uncle Bill called the doctor, the doctor said, driving that thing is going to kill you dead. Oh, from driving that thing, yes, from driving that thing, even down to the judge, he's talking about him driving that thing. Uncle Bill was raggedy, clean out of sight. Every time you meet him, he would want to fight Oh, from driving that thing Yes, from driving that thing Even down to the judge is talking about him driving that thing Stayed out last night, the night before Come home this morning knocking on his door He was driving that thing Yes, from driving that thing mm, All the lawyers in town Talking about him driving that thing
you can see how a song like that in the 30s amongst a bunch of political business owning land owning men drinking would be fun I like it right now anyways but you can see how it, it was very directed towards a thing you know it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a swervy swervy thing you know anyways you'll notice all that I'm using a music stand to read the lyrics um, and that's just because I haven't memorized them all and that's okay and I'm okay and we're okay and the world is okay I just wanted to let you guys all know that uh, that it's okay to do that the classical person in me playing on stage by myself is like oh you got to memorize all the stuff but those days are they're not behind me mother I'm still gonna play classical just not as much Okay, um, what did I play last? Okay, this next song is... There's an obscure artist named Garfield Akers. And he did this, uh, this just... In Incredibly powerful performance of um, what he calls Doe Roller Blues. Uh, a lot of lyrics that are found in a lot of a lot of songs. But um, he does this like real frenetic thing. Which is a, is that? It doesn't even make sense. I could I can't I couldn't even learn it like he played it because it it was. It was his mind that was playing it. So I re redid some of it to just emulate. Uh, anyway, it's called Doe Roller Blues. <laughs>
And I told my woman Just before I left this town Yes, I told my lady Just before I left this town Don't you let nobody Tear the bell half down And I began to walk away Yes, I fold my arms And I began to walk away That's all right, sweet mama Trouble's gonna find you someday Yeah. So that's a two. That's a. That's. I just. I just like that song. Listen to it. Find it. Dough Roller Blues. Garfield Acres. Um, it's a real powerful version. You know, I mentioned earlier the recording industry and and just the loss that they had. You know, like early early on before the industry was the industry. The industry that we thought of was the industry. The industry actually started in furniture stores. You know, when uh, Thomas Edison um, uh, invented, well, he didn't invent it. Somebody else invented it. He just, he got there and patented it. In 1877, I think, he patented the, 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 the um, phonograph um, and, uh, or the, cylind the cylinder, cylindrical disc, whatever the heck it's called, phonograph. It's called phonograph. I'm confusing myself, but I don't know. And um, and so you had these discs that were that were like the size of a uh, you know like this. They they, they kind of looked like this, and um, they'd spin around, and they had little grooves in them. You know, just like a record player is flat, they had little grooves in them, and they would play. Well, they'd put them in these fancy little boxes, and then you'd buy these cabinets, these phonograph cabinets, and you'd put the cylinder in the cabinet to store, right? And so there, there wasn't like a mad rush to make phonographs, right? They didn't really know what they're doing. They, they made some music that was like that, that, you know, kind of that European art stuff. You know, was, they just didn't really know what the market was out there, what was being played. And so they'd make these cabinets and they put them in. Well, then they, then they realized, you know, man, we need, to, we need to find more music to put in these cabinets. That was literally the thought process. Not like we need to find more music because I enjoy this part of my life where I put in a phonograph and listen to it. They like needed they needed to scratch this itch, which was filling this cabinet. And so these furniture co co companies, you know, up in like Kalamazoo and stuff, would send out these um, scouts to go all across the United States and find music and record it. And you know they had these you know recorders in their trunks or stuff like that. They're big hunking things where they record folks and they'd, you know, you can see some early video of of, of these big machines in the back of you know a, a, you know, a, a 
car, you know, going around and going into the country and recording fiddle festivals or something like that. But they'd also send people to come up, um, come up the road uh, or come, come up to, to Michigan or Minnesota or wherever they were in these furniture stores where they were making this stuff and record like eight or nine songs, eight or nine sides, pay them a little bit of money and send them back down to Texas or something like that. And, uh, and that's how the music industry started is like, getting a bunch of stuff that really nobody had any idea of what to do with or really necessarily knew it existed. And then like, and then they came to the conclusion, oh, well, you know what? These, these white folks love that fiddle stuff and these black folks really love that blue stuff. Let's make a business out of that plan. <laughs> and they did. And it went for a number, uh, for a while. But it, what it did was it skewed this whole idea of what we can, it, it, it created, it took the genre and it made it into something, I think maybe a little evil, right? Where you assign people to a genre or genre to a people. And, and, and instead, of, instead of this suggestion that, you know, anybody could or can like any of this music. And so for a number of years, it created this narrative that fiddle, banjo, that kind of stuff was, was a white instrument. and, and and, and you know, gospel or some of these church songs were, were black music and never did this stuff kind of intermix. And it's just a fallacy of, 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 our, of our, like many fa fallacies of our, of our industry and of our culture. This next song has really nothing to do with that story that I just told you, but it was on my mind, so I thought I'd tell it to you. Um, this song is a, a song by the great Furry Lewis. Great Furry Lewis, uh, and it's a song that, um, you know, even even played back, you know, 100 years ago, man, not 100 years ago, 80 years ago, um, still has a lot of relevance today. You know, right now we're in the midst of a court case uh, for, um, for George Floyd um, and the officer that killed him, and, um, you know, stories like that obviously have been a, a pervasive part of our, of our, um, of our news cycle for um, a number of years, and even way before that, before we even had the phones to videotape it. But the other side of the coin is, is that people also get framed um, for murder or drug possession or or anything. And back in the day, in pre in Reconstruction, uh, post Civil War, people got arrested for crossing the street. People got arrested for not working. Uh, just sitting on the side of the street talking to people. If you didn't have, if you weren't at work, you were arrested. You were blamed for stealing a chicken to s feed your family, and you got put in jail for a number of years, lives often. And so that's the legacy of, of some of this that's recorded in some of these blues songs. This is called Judge Harsh Blues.
Well, my baby come running with a hundred dollars in her hand. Said my baby come running with a hundred dollars in her hand. Saying, Judge, Judge, please spend my man. Judge said, a hundred won't do. Better run and get your three. Said, a hundred won't do. Better run and get your three. Save your man from the penitentiary. Because I'm arrested, I want you to tear that jail hat down. Baby, cause I'm arrested, won't you tear that jail hat down? It ain't done no good but to keep my people down. And all these people talking about what they gonna do. Said all these people talking about what they gonna do. And if we'd had justice, you'd be in the jail hat too. Longer than I thought I've been playing, um, but I've also been talking, I guess. So there's that. Um, I wanna, I wanna thank Earshot Jazz for having me here, John, Halen, and Brad for having me here. This is, um, uh, this is great to just be able to play music um, in front of people. I'll be at three. I'm sure there's, I'm sure you are out there too. I, I believe you. I see you. I feel you out there on the Ethernet. Um, and uh, and just, you know, um, I just want to emphasize that I know that this is hard. It's hard for a lot of people. It's a lot, you know, it's hard for the many people who obviously have, have lost loved ones and people in their lives. And it's certainly hard to isolate ourselves and keep ourselves, um, you know, by ourselves uh, for, for this year now that we're in it. Um, but we have to stay vigilant because if we don't, um, we're just gonna stick stick here, and uh, we have to we have to remind ourselves and tell ourselves that if by staying inside, by just keeping to ourselves and not going out clubbing, and st and I'm not I, people are out there clubbing. I was driving the other day. Some people are out clubbing. Now that might be you out there. Don't do it. Cause we gotta. We, I'm not saying it's you, but. I'm just saying, don't do it. If you know somebody that's doing it, Smokey the Bear that. Just tell them only you can prevent pandemics. <laughs> so, you know, just, 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 let's, let's just keep on. Let's just keep on keeping on for a little bit longer so that we can all, all reap the benefits of what it's like to, to hug each other and, and celebrate each other and be next to each other. Um, I'm gonna play a couple more songs here for you guys, um, and uh, and uh, let's see what am I gonna do here? I'll, I'll play one more guitar tune, and I'll play a, another fiddle tune to close us out. This is another obscure tune. You talked to me like eight years ago and asked me if I would ever play an instrument where I had to continue tuning, retuning the guitar, I'd have been like, hell no. It's a waste of time. And now it's all I do. Just retune the guitar. This is another uh, song by another obscure character. This is by a guy named uh, Clifford Gibson. And uh, John Miller, the phenomenal guitar um, player 
lives here. I think actually he might live in Bellingham now or Everett, um, but he's in the Pacific Northwest. He uh, he commented on uh, on this song that it was one of the one of the few blues songs um, that one has this weird form. It doesn't. It, it it goes from like the one to the like minor two, and that's it. And then um, also uh, talks about voodoo um, in some sort of way. Um, and so just think about that with the song. I think you could probably think a whole bunch of other things with this song, which you'll gather as I sing it, but it's really about voodoo. <laughs> the beauty of this stuff, all the entendres. What you do, you sure can't quit your woman. She puts that thing on you. She put that thing on you. She puts it on you just right. You can eat when you get hungry, partner. And you can't sleep at night No, you can't sleep at night No, you can't sleep at night You can't eat When you get hungry, partner And you can't sleep at night a married woman to let me be her key she said she swears she put that thing on me if I couldn't keep it in well I couldn't keep it here no no I couldn't keep it here she says she swear she put that thing on me and I couldn't keep it in. Well, my baby quit me, got her another man. And the way she put that thing on me, I, I couldn't raise my hand. And I tell you from my experience, I'll give you your advice. If you got a good woman partner, ooh, you better treat her nice. Yes, you better treat her nice. Yes, you better treat her nice. If you got a good woman partner, you better treat her right.
That's a real nice song. And if you listen to Glifford, Cl Glifford, Gl Clifford sing it. God, what a voice. Just what a, what an incredible voice that guy has. Um, you know, since you guys have all this time out there, uh, you should, uh, you should start, you should start listening to some old, some of this old music. You should go, you should be dancing in your rooms to records with like food burning on the stove. Just, you know, while there's still time, you should be doing that. Um, I know that we actually don't have time on our hands. I feel like I'm more busy than I was <laughs> before the pandemic because work is all over the place. Um, this last song is in the spirit of that dancing, though. Um, you know, it's not often that you're going to get a waltz in the blues literature, but it does happen. And the Mississippi Sheiks did it. And they uh, they came up with a song. It's a real fun number. It's a it's a waltz. Um, another inventive name. It's called the Chic Waltz. And uh, it goes through three different keys. And it's just kind of a fun little funky little thing. So if you're at home and you're looking for something to do right now while you listen to the sweet sultry tones coming out of your screen. Um, you should, uh, you should grab your honey or your cat or your dog or a stuffed animal or, um, or, or just, you know, you could just do this, you know, and just dance, just dance a little waltz. Waltzes are easy. Count to three, move your, move your feet in accordance to the numbers. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Very easy. Very easy.
Thank you all so very much. Thank you again to Earshot Jazz for having me. Thanks for Brad in the Royal Room for having me. I hope you guys have a wonderful night. Tip your bartender. <laughs> See you guys another time. Benjamin Hunter. Benjamin Hunter. Thank you all.